RNG is actually more prevalent than you think. You might be surprised at how much RNG is in League. This is a deeper look into RNG. League of Legends is known for being a very competitive game, from casual play to the pro scene, but how much RNG is there in League? While researching this video, I wondered what would be RNG that everyone knows. The first thing that came to mind were dragon spawns. At the beginning of each game, there is a dragon that spawns in, and once the third dragon spawns, is what the dragon will be for the rest of the game. Now is this enough to change the tide of games? Sometimes it is. For example, Infernal Dragon is sometimes good to spawn last, that way the losing team can gain some much needed damage in order to gain some kind of advantage, but could be detrimental if the winning team gains those dragons. There are five dragons that can spawn. Infernal, Cloud, Ocean, Air, and the new Hextech Dragon. There was Chemtech, but I don't want to go there because it should have never been introduced in the first. All dragons have an equal chance of spawning in League. Also, depending on what third dragon spawns in, the terrain changes, each specific for each said dragon. But is this enough to be two RNG? First, we have to set some rules. The RNG has to be an element of gameplay. So loot boxes and other outside RNG specific things don't count. Next. It cannot be hard manipulated by the player. So for example, Draven's axes are not RNG because they can be manipulated to where you want them to land. I'll mention more on him later. And that's really it for the rules. Let's take more of a look at the map. The next RNG element that stands out the most is the plants, specifically the honey fruit. This can spawn anywhere on the river walls. Unless the third dragon is ocean, then they spawn in even more places. This can save lives by gaining some health before Carfasol, for example, or for just taking objectives. And that's pretty much it for the map. But what is one RNG gameplay element for all champions in League? The only thing that every champion has that is RNG is critical strikes. Now I know what you're thinking, not all champions build crit. And you're right, but every champion could theoretically build crit from items. Let's take our favorite crit champion, Trinomir. His passive gives him crit for the more attacks he dishes out, up to a certain point. Now if you build some items with crit, he can have 100% crit, making it so that he will always crit. Every champion has the capability to obtain 100% crit from items. It is even easier with Yasuo and Yone. But if you just have, let's say, 50% crit, now we're talking RNG. This can make or break the tide of a fight if theoretically half of your attacks crit the enemy. But how does the crit decide this? Let's think of it this way. The game checks your auto attack as soon as you right click on an enemy. If you have 0% crit, it skips this step and it attacks normally. But if you have just even 1% crit, it runs your attack through the numbers 1 through 100. If it lands on 1, then cool, you just crit. But if it lands on 2, then sorry, no crit. The cool thing about it is that you could theoretically crit for every attack in the game with just 1%. However, that would most likely not happen because nothing gives you just 1% crit anymore like the old room. But if you have 95% crit, you would more than likely crit your target. But you could theoretically not crit. Is this an to be a problem in League? Well, let's look deeper. You know how I mentioned Draven? Well, LeBlanc and Draven are both hard to put on this list. The reason is that Draven's axe placement and LeBlanc's passive movement, both untouched, will work on their own. For example, if you just auto attack with Draven's axes live, the places where you can catch them are RNG. With LeBlanc's passive, we'll go in a random direction. Both have RNG aspects to them, however, Draven can direct where the axes go after autoing, and the block can move or clone. I just wanted to give them honorable mentions. Now here are all the champions that have some sort of RNG aspect. Yeah, I know, that's a lot. Let me explain. These aren't in any order except for the last one, so I'll start here with Zack. Zack's passive drops a blob whenever he uses his ability on an enemy and will heal him if picked up. The place under the blob is where the RNG comes in. It can drop in the way he intends to move, or it could be a complete opposite direction of a favorable outcome. This is one of the more simpler RNGs that exist. Next is Poppy passive placement. It is pretty much the same situation with Zack, where if you used it on an enemy, it will drop in a direction for Poppy to pick up. Now I know what you're thinking, she can auto something and kill it in order to gain a shield effortlessly. So she could be in Draven of LeBlanc's category. Well, here's why this is an RNG aspect. This is the only requirement for her to gain that shield directly. And the odds that she will be near a low health enemy and use it during a fight at any given moment in the game is RNG on its own. It won't be guaranteed to happen as such every game. Whereas as Draven and LeBlanc can manipulate it every game whenever they can. This might be up for debate, so let me know how you feel about it. Next is Fiora's passive. It spawns in a cardinal direction of an enemy champion nearby. Now when Fiora hits the said side, it deals a little bit more damage and heals.
heals her. This is kind of the same case for Poppy. For this, you can move away and let it despawn and move back to respawn in a possibly more favorable outcome. Now that's kind of like breaking the rules, right? However, theoretically, it could spawn in the same place all the time. So this one counts as RNG because you don't know where it can end up. Next, I want to talk about Twisted Fate. <laughs> He is loaded with RNG. I mean, given that the theme dealing with cards is fitting for him, his passive gives him gold every time he gets a kill on an enemy. That gold amount is random, ranging from 1 to 6. He could just get 1 gold for every kill, or could get the maximum every time. This is simple RNG that exists in the game. Also, with his W, pick a card. It used to be manipulated to when the game starts, if you would count, one, two, three, at the same beat as when you would cast the ability, you would get blue on one, red on two, and gold on three. A Korean player found this out and used this to its advantage. Riot actually changed this to where it isn't that case anymore, and now it will randomly start on a color whenever you cast the ability. Twisted Fate is the most well-fitting RNG champion in the game. Next is Alawi. She has a problem for this because I want to exclude her, but I want to include her at the same time. Her passive makes it to where a tentacle will spawn on the closest wall to her whenever it comes off of cooldown. She can, in a way, choose which wall to put it on, but not where it goes on the wall. Some tentacles might not spawn in a closer place to where you want it to be. They could just be out of range of when she needs it. I decided to put her on this list because you can't directly place it. It is out of the player's control of where it could actually get placed. Next is Mundo passive placement. It drops just like Poppy's and Zach's passive. It works in the same way and it could be a pain to retrieve or easy to get. There's not much else there. Kindred is next on the list. Her passive spawns on a random jungle camp that she can take on an enemy side of the jungle. It does spawn on scuttle crab first but the point is is that she has to be getting these marks from wherever it spawns in the jungle and is rng enough to make this list late into the game it goes under the bigger objectives meaning that her mid game is completely rng the player has to make the decision of whether to give it up or to go for it depending on where it spawns next is zyra passive it shoots out a seed that can become plants whenever she uses her q or e these plants randomly shoot out in any direction wherever she is before she was rework this was actually the only way she could get plants on the map then they changed it to where she can now cast two plants with her w however her passive still has that rng effect so she still makes the cut next is quinn passive there's a lot of passives on this list just in case you haven't caught on her passive places a mark on a random nearby visible enemy when she autos it the mark triggers and deals more damage the mark randomly selects what enemy to be on this can be overwritten by having an enemy champion close by first however she just has enough rng to make this list because you can't choose exactly which target to go on next is a combination of two champions Thresh and Senna both have souls that drop from random enemies. These are their passives. They will drop on enemy takedowns, large enemy minions, large monsters, and epic monsters, dragon and herald of baron. These actually drop two each. I don't know if you knew that. But randomly drop when it comes to basic minions. This is RNG enough to where it actually tells you the chance of the drops with a percentage. Now Thresh and Senna, they both don't really have the same looks or effects that they give them whenever they pick up their respective souls but they both do definitely have a percentage on them, which, you know, makes it random. Now this one is an interesting RNG mechanic. I think the most interesting in the game. Bard's passive spawns chimes at a random location on the map. Literally any location on the map. Now in the early game, they do spawn within a certain distance of where Bard is, but late game, they can literally spawn anywhere. These chimes, whenever he picks them up, he gains certain effects after he goes past the five markers. So every five he gets, he gains some kind of effect. Every five he gets, he gains a little bit more of damage or something like that. He holds the largest physical RNG element in the game. And lastly, the most RNG champion, in my opinion, goes to Zoe. She has a passive on her W that makes her where a random minion in the wave will carry a balloon, and when she kills it, it drops a random item active or a random summoner spell. She can get a possibly weaker drop from balloon to balloon. However, the trade-off of getting bad drops is that you could get good drops too. This ability is completely RNG. You don't know when a balloon will spawn, you don't know what you're going to get whenever you do manage to obtain one, but with an ability that is already hated by the community due to her picking up the player's summoner spells and activate, you know, 
if you played against Zoe, you would know. And that's really just it for the RNG in League of Legends. Let me know what you think, and let me know if I missed any that you could think of. The only ones that I really kind of could think of were Lulu's picks and how it was placed. I don't know if it like moves around a little bit or what. And Brand's ult bounces whenever there's no flamed enemies. Thank you for taking a deeper look.